I'm Melissa Parton here for Double Digest with publisher Hode Rubino. And Hode, ASU is about to take on Navy next week. And there's a lot of talk about Navy's triple option of offense. And how is ASU defense going to handle this pressure? Well, I think it's one of those offenses where you can go to simulate as much as you want in practice. You can watch game film until your eyes bleed. But until you see it live on game day, it's really going to be real hard to go ahead and know how I need to go to prepare for it. So I could definitely see a scenario where the ASU defense might struggle for the first quarter, maybe for the entire half but really uh, do some halftime adjustments and after seeing it for, for 30 minutes, uh, be able to go and deal with it better the last 30 minutes of the game. It's an offense where, uh, similar to Oregon, obviously not in the caliber of athletes or uh, the big play capability, but it's still an offense obviously that's predicated a lot on the run. Um, it's really quicker than it is more powerful, a lot of quick decision making by the quarterback, a lot of deception, and uh, it's gonna be imperative uh, for, Ar for Arizona State Again, much like playing a team like Oregon, to be very disciplined in their assignments. Don't try to do somebody else's job. Go ahead and stick to your assignment, to your to your gap, to your lane, and uh, that way you have a better chance of go ahead and combating uh, an offense that's really uh, really hard to handle, even for teams that uh, are much uh, talented than Navy. Ozmakers have ASU with a touchdown, two touchdown favorite. And is ASU going to be able to cover that spread? Well, I mean, I, I think they definitely can, but I don't think it's going to be easy uh, like, uh, like everybody thinks it will be because, again, I think the triple option offense is going to go ahead and uh, have that adjustment period on the defensive side. I think the offense should do uh, just fine because I think that uh, ASU just has too much firepower. I think the up-tempo up uh, offense can wear down a defense like Navy. Navy's a team that, uh, on average, gave, thir gave up 38 points to all the BCS conference teams that faced this year. It's a, it's a bend but not break uh, defense, so it's going to give up its, uh, its, its shares of plays uh, throughout the game. So, I mean, I think ASU can go ahead and uh, cover that spread. I don't think it's, it's going to be as easy as people think it's going to be. I don't, I don't see ASU leading 21, 24, nothing after first quarter. I think it's going to come just a little, a little slower than that. But yeah, I think ASU can go ahead and definitely win this game handily as they're expected to. Is it, the, is it kind of a no win? game for ASU because they are the sub-position favorite? Well, on, on the one, one hand, it really is because, like you said, uh, I mean, if, if they don't don't win by, by more than two touchdowns, they think, okay, what went wrong, you know, let alone, obviously, uh, a, a surprising loss. So in that sense, yeah, I mean, it's a it's not a win that a lot of people are going to look at the end of the season and go, wow, ASU beat Navy. But on the other hand, I think you have to look at the bigger picture. Since the turn of the century, only three teams have won eight games or more here, here in Tempe. So Arizona State goes in and gets to be that fourth team. Uh, and uh, obviously that's something that nothing that happened, you know, every other year. So that's something you have to be, uh, you know, proud about. And we talked so much about, um, you know, buying into a new system, buying into a new culture. And I know it sounds cliche. I know it sounds so worn out. But I think uh, winning, uh, winning against Navy, having an eight-win, uh, having an eight-win season, really shows you that this team has uh, been able to successfully do the 180-degree turn that Graham has implemented over here. I mean, so many changes on the field, off the field. And to go to an end with a bowl victory, to end with eight wins, I, I think it's something you should really shrug, shrug your shoulders um, uh, uh, over, even if you're winning a team just like Navy. What are the key points for victory for, on both sides of the wall? Well, I mean, again, there's so much to talk about the triple offense, the triple option offense. Yeah, I really start, start with that. I mean, uh, the de defense for ASU, uh, I think we be able to go ahead and handle the triple option offense in the sense that they're fast and they're athletic, but again, it's going to come down to discipline. And discipline obviously is not only staying in your assignments, but also go ahead and committing, not committing that many penalties. As good as ASU was uh, not committing penalties, Navy's even better in that sense. So uh, that's the, the type of opponent that you have uh, on, on the other side of the ball. Uh, but I think uh, the defense uh, overall, if they can go ahead and uh, just adjust uh, sooner rather than later to the triple option offense. Go ahead and be disciplined. Don't be discouraged if, if there's like a lot of big plays that uh, Navy's able to run the first quarter or the first half. I think uh, that this should be just fine. On offense, I think that if ASU uh, sticks to his up-tempo um, um, offense, they can go ahead and really wear it down the Navy defense. And just like almost every game this season, if they can be balanced, and we talked about so much about the wide receivers, gave him a hard time, but let's go ahead and give him praise. The last two games, I think they played much better. And if they can go ahead and be a legitimate threat, I just don't think Navy has the secondary to go ahead and uh, stick, stick with ASU wide receivers. So if that ASU offense can be really balanced, where they have the play action pass uh, working for them, I think they should, uh, should do just time on offense. But on defense, again, it's, it's really all about uh, stopping the triple option. If they can go ahead and, and do that, that's more than half the battle against a team like Navy. After the win from Arizona, we have, we have this ASU team sitting at 7-5. and five, And with them going to the Craft Fight Hunger Bowl, with the win there, would this season be a success? Yeah, absolutely. I think it'll be a success. And, and you talked about this game maybe a no-win situation and nobody's going to go ahead and, and do cartwheels about ASU beating Navy. But again, you have to look at the whole picture. 
And when you have a new coach, a new system, and, and again, just a, a brand new culture change, where it was really easy for a lot of players to go ahead and say, you know, the heck with it, I'm, I'm not going to be part of it, especially if you're a senior. Um, with, with the team just having just a normal learning curve, even if they did buy into it. But I just think that throughout the season, even when ASU had that four-game losing streak, I didn't see that team, to, that, that team implode. I think that's a success, you know, on and in itself. And I know that the last two wins were against teams that were maybe just as good as ASU, if not worse. But again, you have to look. You have to look at the total picture. ASU, so many years, has not won the games they're supposed to won. Has not won eight games, like I mentioned earlier. So to go ahead and do it, I don't think you have to really worry about who you did it against. You won eight. You won eight games. Trust me. There's a lot of teams across the nation right now that would gladly uh, go ahead and uh, trade places with ASU and have eight wins. And to be honest with you, when you analyze the season, it's much easier, much more fun to analyze after eight wins versus eight losses.